welcome. My name is Sonia and I am the associate curator of Le Musée d'Art du Togo Love. I will be your guide in a series of short tours exploring just a small selection of Togo's portraits of his favorite female models over the past several decades. Along with those, we've added the stories behind them. The pictures you will see are rather recent. After collecting his older sketches and paintings, etchings, drawings, and pastels, some of which had been damaged over the years, Togo reimagined them as one of a kind digital artworks. Let us begin. Justine. Justine was only 17 when she first went to work for Togo's mother in the brothel on Manhattan's Lower West Side. Justine's mother had also been a prostitute for many years there before she died from leukemia. As the woman lay dying in St. Vincent's Hospital in Greenwich Village, Togo's mother promised her that she'd take care of Justine. So when the brothel later moved to Paris, Justine moved with it. By then, the young Togo had been drawing portraits of Justine since he could pick up a pencil. After Togo's mother was murdered, the brothel was in turmoil for a while and during that time, Justine left. He's never heard from her again. Estelle Estelle was a working girl in her 20s who had a higher goal to become a respectable actress on the New York stage. When she was rehearsing for a small production of Rapunzel, in which she was cast as the witch, she'd parade about in a fishnet costume and garish makeup. All the while, she'd whisper the whole role, so as not to wake the rest of the house. Young Togo was mystified at this strange profession. Why on earth would anyone want to do such a thing? On top of which, she wasn't even getting paid. Nevertheless, he helped Estelle to remember her lines. Here she is in all her glory. Estelle did not come along to Paris when the brothel moved there. Togo does not know if she ever made it to the Broadway stage. Annika Togo thinks Annika was fresh off the boat from Greece when she first went to work for his mother in her brothel. He doesn't remember Annika even speaking a bit of English. Still, she was a lot of fun for the young boy who grew up in such a place. He remembers her being a bit older than the rest of the women, perhaps even his mother's age. Occasionally, she'd look at the boy with wistful eyes, often filled with tears, while stroking his hair back. Then, she'd wipe her tears away and collect herself and hand Togo a dime to go and buy some candy for himself. Roberta leaves forever. Togo and Roberta's on and off relationship lasted almost two decades and resulted in two children and a lot of love and a lot of strife. Eventually, both knew it couldn't continue, but Togo just couldn't make that move. So, it was up to Roberta. Once she had made that decision, both felt a great relief and, like other similar breakups, they became even closer friends. And, of course, they had their children, who were in their late teens and both supported their parents' decision. Less stress seemed best for everyone. However, it would be the last time Togo saw Roberta because, on the day she had physically left the house, no sooner had she driven away and arrived at the airport, Roberta clutched her chest and suffered a heart attack and immediately died. She was 49. That tragedy left Togo in a terrible state and his own health began to decline, as he refused medical aid. He became a hermit, virtually, in his farmhouse, while his smallest children were cared for by his former wives and eldest children. He remained in that detrimental haze for a year or so, until two of his oldest sons, one of them a doctor, took it upon themselves to restore their father to his old self. They would gather together all of his loved ones to prove to him that life was still worth living. It worked. At one time or other, the whole family, including a few of his former wives and even a few lovers, models, and muses, and all of his children and grandchildren too, had temporarily visited or moved into the sprawling farmhouse. The place looked like a hippie commune from the 60s. It made him happy as his life drew closer to its final bow. Currently, Togo says he's still not gotten over Roberta's death, but, he's making the best of his remaining time by creating new art every day. A gift. 
While Togo was imprisoned, he'd often while away the time drawing portraits of nude women from magazines. With these, he'd ingratiate himself with his prison mates, and the guards as well, who had admired his talent. He'd make gifts to them to decorate their dreadful cells. Often, they'd hand to him damaged or faded photographs of their lovers or wives, asking him to somehow idealize their women in more imaginative situations. Such as in this picture, a version of which his cellmate had sent to his wife as a Christmas present. Togo remembers that he had to really work on it for a few days in order to transform the original subject into a beautiful temptress waiting for her lover. Naturally, he made various versions. As you can see, he kept the best for himself. Miranda Miranda was Togo's cousin on his mother's side. She had resided in Charlotte, North Carolina all of her life. She was a brilliant pianist who might have graced the stages of concert halls around the world. Instead, she chose to become a high school music teacher. As the years progressed, she lived at home with her parents and took care of them into their senior years. By the time they had both died, she was already past middle age and her physical beauty was rapidly fading. Miranda took to drinking and she was eventually fired from her job. But, alone in her inherited home, she still played her beloved Chopin as if performing at Carnegie Hall. Wild encores from her audiences always followed. Sadly, in 2011, her body was found months after her death which was ruled of natural causes. Togo based this portrait on an old black and white photo Miranda had once sent to him. He hated himself for having neglected to paint her until after she had died. Luella takes a nap, and Luella's grand finale. Luella was a prostitute in the brothel run by Togo's mother in New York City and, later in Paris. When Togo's mother was murdered, Luella helped to raise the boy by making sure that his artistic talent would not go unnoticed. She invited many men who were influential in the art world, as well as, a few well-known French artists who were her clients to come to see Togo's portraits of the women who worked at the house. She had many of the boys' pictures framed and presented them on easels around the parlor. These pictures here of Luella during that time were included. Also, she took the reins of running the business for many years thereafter. Togo's incarceration for manslaughter wore heavy upon her, but she was there for him when he was released. Togo considered Luella a surrogate mother and, in her later years, when she was dying, he took care of her until her death in 1997. Cynthia in Taos After a terrible argument with Togo in New York City in 1982, Cynthia ran off to live with her sister in Taos, New Mexico. Two days later, Togo arrived on her doorstep and apologized. Both of them knew that their relationship was over, so, he left a day later. This picture is a memento of that short visit. Good Friday. Joyce was much leaner than most of Togo's models, but she was quite eager to help him to experiment in new directions. He trusted her artistic sensibilities and allowed her, not only to suggest, but, to try out her ideas for him. Good Friday stands out as a rather odd picture among his other works at that time. Both artist and model loved the result. These days, Togo misses such collaboration. Joyce Joyce was a bartender and artist in Berlin in 2016 when she first met Togo. She was half his age, but, they found that they shared a common love for the works of Egon Schiele. Joyce challenged Togo to portray her as one of Schiele's models. This is it. Princess. For decades, this picture was thought to be long lost or destroyed, until Jezebel, Togo's eldest daughter, found it, along with a hundred more of her father's creations, in the attic of Togo's 18th century farmhouse in southern France. She titled it Princess because it reminded her of Sleeping Beauty. Months later, she showed two to her father and he smiled and said that the model had been, once again, Joyce. He had totally forgotten the picture. He seemed thrilled. Lost inside a renewed memory, he rushed off with the picture intending to have it framed right away. However, did he ever thank Jezebel for her discovery? 
Did he commend her for that title? The world may never know. But, it is a good bet that he did not. The Yale Professor She was not an actual professor at Yale or anywhere else. Did it matter? Not to Togo. They met through a mutual friend at a party on the Upper West Side, he remembers her as a very intelligent woman, but little else. She was either a housewife, or she was a secretary for a major advertising company in Midtown. They had only met twice or three times during the space of a few months back then. When titling this picture years later, the aging Togo could not remember her name. For some reason, he thought of her as a professor. She was going to be named, the Princeton Professor, but, you must agree, she does look more like she'd be a professor from Yale. Hollywood Togo nicknamed this movie legend as Hollywood because she always seemed to be ready for her close-up. At gatherings, he often introduced her as the most beautiful woman he had ever met. As we now know, he had said that about quite a few women in his life. The couple hit the headlines of the European gossip rags, when a paparazzo's photos revealed them romping nude on a secluded Mediterranean beach at sunset. Her agent, trying to revive her declining career, forbid her to associate with Togo again. Sadly, she obeyed. Even sadder, the breakup did nothing to save her career. Three years later, one of her fans commissioned Togo to paint this portrait based on a well-known photo of her. The fan had seen one of his portraits of Elizabeth Taylor and insisted that Togo should be the artist for this project, as well. At first, Togo declined, but, the fan offered a tremendous amount of money for it. Emotionally speaking, it was not an easy task. Still, Togo finished it in one day, which enabled him to purchase his Harley Davidson. Joyce wings it. As stated earlier, Togo enjoyed working with the younger Joyce because of her spontaneity, intelligence and her improvisational skills when posing or performing. One minute, she'd screw her naked body up into a ball on the floor, and the next minute, she'd be flying across the studio like a caged bird set free. She'd even add sounds like an animal in distress, or growl, ready to pounce. But, she was always precise in her movements, never sloppy or without thought. Joyce knew where she was going. Unlike most of Togo's other models. At home 9am. This is a very early picture made by Togo at 10 or 11 years old. He's not sure who the model was back then. There were so many of the working women coming and going in his mother's brothel. Some had lived there and so, they had to follow the rules. If they had been out all night, they had to be back by 9 in the morning. They could sleep for a few hours before the late afternoon crowd of men began to arrive, by reservation only. Then, it was non-stop work until midnight. Little Togo saw it all, as is evident in this fine portrayal. Something wicked this way comes. The Monaghan sisters. Between them were three divorces, producing, three children, each of those taken into state custody. One sister was an alcoholic, the other two hooked on cocaine, one a drug dealer. All three had served jail sentences for one crime or another. The youngest, while high, killed a convenience store clerk for $10. The middle sister became a strung out street hooker and disappeared from sight. The oldest with her boyfriend, attempted to rob a bank and both were shot to death. The Monahans gave the term, born under a bad sign, a new meaning when it came to family ties. And, yet, somewhere along the line, they had stopped to pose together for Togo. Not that it matters much, but this may be the only group portrait of them as adults. Well fellow art lovers, that ends our tour of Togo's portraits for today. Thank you for coming to our current exhibition here at Le Musée Dadu Togo Love. If you would like to see and hear more tours in our free ongoing series, you are invited to do so. Now then, you may exit the gallery through the doorway to your left. Have a good day.